why the save icon still looks like the flop disk, even if you never use one. You know this icon, the save button, but here's the strangest part, it's a flop disk. This looks like a drink coaster than a storage device. So why is an obsolete bit of plastic is still the universal symbol of saving your work? The flop disk was born at IBM in 1971, first as an 8-inch flexible disk that stored just 8 KB of data. <laughs> By 1976, the 5 quarter inch mini flop arrived, better suited for home computers. This held around 110 KB, eventually reached 1.2 MB in their high-density version. But in 1982, Sony introduced our savior, the 3.5 inch desk. Studier with a sliding metal shutter to protect the magnetic surface, which Apple made it mainstream with Macintosh in 1984. And soon it was everywhere. By the late 80s, the high density version stored the amount of 1.44 megabytes. But let's put that into perspective. One photo you take from your phone already has around 3 to 5 megabytes, meaning you need two of these to storage this single photo. And one minute of today's 4K video resolution? Hundreds of this. So yes, your phone self today is literally too big for an entire flop disk. And yet, in the 80s and 90s, saving a file meant writing directly into one of these disks. That was the act of saving. To install an operating system such as Windows in your computer could take in dozens of floppies in a sequence. Normally like 1 of 26, 2 of 26, and if one of them fail, you were stuck. Yeah, hard times you had back in the days. So when the early interfaces add the save button, the flop disk wasn't just symbolic, it was exactly what saving meant. For the Windows users, you ever wonder why your computer starts with the letter C? Because A and B was these babies. They weren't optional extras, they were the first drives your machine recognized. Once the floppy disk was everywhere, it did take long to jump from hardware to software. That was the moment when this piece of plastic became the visual metaphor. By the late 90s, CD-ROMs and later USB sticks replaced floppies as storage. But its icon is staying softer. That's interface inertia. Jacob Nielsen's famous law of UX explains it. People spend most of their time using other systems, so they expect yours to work in the same way. As every program used the floppy disk for save, change it would confuse millions of users. So, the icon stayed. And eventually it became more familiar than the object itself. And I still love doing this. <laughs> but here's the fascinating part. The floppy disk isn't the unique object inside the context you want to show in this video. Design culture is full of symbols that survive long after the objects vanish. For instance, nobody uses a magnifying glass to search, and we still click on it. Email is nothing like posting a paper letter, but still the envelope remains as a universal metaphor for mail. Nobody uses such kind of phone anymore. And yet, the cow icon still uses this hook. Too bad, because the younger audience never know the satisfaction of slam the phone in the face of the person. Just out of curiosity, this was one of the first mobile devices for cars. I love it. Quite a change in mobile setting, isn't it? Some icons outlive the hardware because they move from being signifiers, tied to real object, into being a symbol, tied to collective memory. The flop disk crossed that line. It represents an action, an idea, save. So why do we keep trusting icons that don't match reality anymore? The answer isn't technical, it's emotional. Symbols endure when they feel safe. Think about the stop design. Even without the word stop, the red octagon says it all. The shape itself became the meaning. And the flop disk is the same. Distinct, recognizable, burn into our cultural memory. From a semiotic perspective, we can say flop disk shift from icon, a likeness of the object itself, to a symbol, a convention agreed by culture. Maybe it's also saving a generation's memory of computing. And if you enjoyed this video, I'm Johnny, Doctor Interface Design, and this is Design Globetrotter. And if you like to see how design shapes the way we think, from emojis to street sign, consider subscribing.
And with the evolution of storage, of course, people try to move on from this. New icons, modern metaphors, slicker visuals. But here's the problem. None of them felt as clear as the flop disk. For instance, arrow downs could mean download. Clowns might give the impression that just being saved online and not in your hard disk. So here I want you to think with me, how could we replace or update the save icon? As a creative exercise, if I have to do a save icon, how I would do it? So I use the odd shape, the floppy disk has this cut corner, combined with a down arrow. Distinct from just download, but it still requires some cognitive effort. But this hybrid approach isn't new, and it tends to confuse more than clarify. With this exercise, you're not just dealing with aesthetics, but with a cognitive challenge. Once users learn a visual behavior, replacing this hard, because people already have this mental model, the way they expect things to work. Break that model and the icon no longer feels intuitive. So, the flop disk stayed even though it's long obsolete. And that is the power of icons. They represent how culture chooses to remember it. The flop disk is a relic, but its shapes still commands universal recognition. And symbols guide us not only in digital environments, but in the physical world as well. Click here for my video on pictograms to see how they are shaping behavior and guide us through the daily life. I hope you enjoyed this nostalgic chapter that still affects our life. And See you in the next video.